Hey there folks and welcome back to another episode of Solar City Garage. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you're a new viewer, welcome to the channel. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe and uh, you can go back and watch our other series of videos we're doing on this TT truck uh, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So we're uh, switching gears here and going to the uh, chassis and today our goal is to uh, you know, you got you got to pick one end or the other, so let's just start with the rear end uh, and just kind of see what we need. Let's make out a little shopping list, especially for all the little stuff um, that we try not to forget. It's important when you order that uh, you try to remember all the little stuff you can because pretty much shipping costs the same. So we try to save a little there and also keep the project moving. Sometimes that's why projects get to a certain point they just uh, stop progressing because you get tired of forgetting this and that and ordering parts and waiting and then something else shiny comes along so you grab onto that so but anyway uh let's uh move back to the rear end and uh see what we got be right back all right <clears throat> it's time to take a look at what we've got here of course we have seen this in previous videos but we're kind of a little up and closer here uh Parking brake shoes on the TT are bigger than car, of course, and they're made out of cast iron. And as you can see, they like to brake. So this shouldn't be straight here. The only thing holding it's the lining. So those are just plain junk. I've taken them apart where people have raised them. Uh, and they're usually broke, broken uh, right beside where the braze is. Uh, another thing is this has had some kind of retrofit later model style uh, outer seal put on it and I ain't gonna lie I've already had the other side to tinker with because uh, we're sitting down here on the floor so I needed to know what tools I needed because getting up and down the older I get is uh, you know not not pleasant especially on video so uh, they, they this side here has got a felt that isn't in the right place the other side had a whole bunch of other stuff just like they didn't know what to do with it and they just threw it back on there so we're going to eliminate these uh, and we are going to put the felt style seals on the outside and modern style seal on the inside um, so it, it's a good compromise um, we need to uh, check the the bearing as you can see here we've got quite a bit of up and down play and not much back and forth which is to be anticipated because this was a you know basically a one ton truck designed to work and that's just what she did so the bearing is probably okay it's the sleeve inside that's kind of sacrificial so we plan on pulling those out too so Let's get started here. Let's uh, get rid of these brake shoes. When they're broke like that, they're kind of easy. You just uh, lift them off and all this goodness here. Don't, don't uh, track that stuff there in the house because uh, mama ain't gonna be happy. We gotta be sure to Save the spring. I have a little box here to put stuff in. So let's get rid of that one and flip it over here. Now in this brake equalizer, they're held in with pins and, and cotter keys. So we're gonna get them turned around. Hello. Hmm. 
All right, that mirror kind of fought us a little bit. Sometimes the pins are wore a little. Need a little persuasion. Actually, it was just a piece of crud in the hole there. So the pin looked okay. There's another junk, almost unobtainium part. Something a person has to remember with the age of something like this. Somebody else has been in here. I mean, that's an obvious. And I'll tell you, this is a gooey, <clears throat> gooey job. Somebody has really been hard on that pin. Oh, well, there's two pins on that one. Well, that one wasn't going anywhere. Amazingly, the pin looks good. More junk. So, um, yep, this is your brake actuator, kind of a cam. Uh, something to check here, there's a bushing where it goes through the backing plate here. As you can see, this one, quite a bit of play. So, so on this brake cam, that's what I like to call it, uh, you can see that this much movement is bad. The vendors used to sell a bushing for there, but I don't know if it's just me, but have you noticed that uh, a lot of TT stuff has disappeared? Like shackle bushings, these bushings, um, the top wood kit, the top vinyl uh, for the roof. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of things that just all of a sudden have kind of went away. So it must just be a sign of the times. So we'll have to uh, take this apart later and uh, We'll just make a bushing on the on the lathe. If we have to get a different cam, we can. So now that the brake shoes are out of the way, let's peel off whatever wherever that was supposed to go. Now we're gonna get this cap off. So these are on there pretty good. So as you can see, this was an attempt at some sort of modern seal. Must have been before my time. Where it's a cap and a modern seal inside of it there. I haven't seen anything quite like that offered. Let's put that in there for now. clean some of this goo off from here. So there you can see the end of the bearing. Now, on the other side, it had a little sleeve on here. Kind of like a repair sleeve, but there was nothing wrong with the shaft. It had been kind of cobbled together with, with this uh, modern seal setup. So the bearing wouldn't come out. It took just a little bit to figure out what was going on there? So you should be able to get in here. Sometimes the sleeve might have a little ledge worn in it. 
he's got to work, work the bearing out. Kind of fiddle around back and forth. And there it's coming. Don't want to force it because we're hoping that this is an original bearing and that it's still usable. You gotta remember it's all goo too. comes. Okay. So here's what the bearing looks like. It's just like a regular car bearing, just on a bigger scale. Good news is it's pretty full of grease, but you can see that inner felt seal wasn't doing its job. So we'll put this in the box too. Should be able to reach in there. Well, I'll tell you, it's pretty hard for the inner felt seal to do its job when it's missing. So inside of there, I, 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 um, it's too hard to get you in there right now. Inside of there, there is like a backwards facing cup that's fastened into the rear end, into the tube, and the felt seal pushed in that, and then the bearing pushed against that, and that helped slow down the leaks a little bit. And the cup is there, because it's supposed to be, but no inner felt seal. So somebody spent the time to put some sort of modern modern seal on the outside, didn't put anything back on the inside. So, there you go. As you can see, this is just a gooey mess, and when you're done, you have to break clean all your tools. Next thing we're going to do is on the back side, back here where you can't see, is we're going to take out the big grease cup that greases this bearing because we're going to be removing this sleeve and to do that um, that has to come out of that hole to let it turn well I had the wrench to do that there it is and these usually come out pretty easy screws out. So here's what that looks like. Okay. We'll clean these up and reuse these. These look like they're in good shape. So we'll put that in the box. So to get the sleeve out, <clears throat> uh, we clean it up here. We have a sleeve puller for a TT truck. It has a button here. And then two holes down here where you put in like a screwdriver and this this thing here this button we need to put it in so it lines up to where that that uh, grease cup went in so you push it in here and you just kind of fish around until you feel it lock in okay so then you got your two holes here. Now, this can slip out of there and you can jack yourself right in the jaw. I just stick a big screwdriver in here and turn clockwise. And as I turn, I pull out like this. There are other ways you can do this. This tool is not very expensive. And there, and just like that, we have the bearing sleeve out. And it does have a groove worn into it, a pretty good one. So, good thing we are replacing that. So there, that's uh, 
The axle shaft, the taper looks good. Uh, where the seal rides looks pretty good. Of course, we'll be putting a felt one out here and we'll be putting the better seal on the inside. Try to keep that oil back as far as we can from the bearing out here. Because the bearing is ran on grease from that grease cut. That helps having all this mess and getting on the brakes. So, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drain the rear end oil out of it. And then uh, when that's done draining, I'll uh, come back and we'll take a look at the oil to see if we should go farther and pull the housing apart and take a look inside. Or if the fluid's nice and you know relatively clean and not a lot of metal, should we just leave it together? Uh, it isn't really leaking or anything. Um, we do have new gaskets for that, but uh, so I don't know. Well, let's uh, we're gonna let the oil drain. It's gonna take a while because it's pretty heavy, and then uh, we'll go from there. So we'll be back. Thanks. Hi there, folks. Welcome back. And we're here uh, giving a little update. We've done a little work here. As you can see, we have removed the radius rods, just two big bolts there with cotter keys and uh, two big nuts, I believe they're 15 sixteenths. We've removed the brake shoes. We've removed the outer seal. This had some kind of modern interpretation of an outer seal, which I don't seem to find is available anymore. We removed the uh, outer bearing, we removed the bearing sleeve, and we also removed the inner washer and the inner felt. This side was here, the other side, uh, those were missing. The washer was in there and is all deformed. It had been in there going back and forth. So we're uh, going to be putting a modern style seal on the inside so we won't need those washers anyway. So something else, we... Uh, we need to check are the, of course, you know, we had the broken brake shoes. Uh, the brake cams have bushings, I guess they're down here, with a little oil cap. This one turns, you know, fairly, fairly tight. It's got a, a little wobble to it, but not bad. It, it, when you pull on it, it wants to stay straight. So this side here, I think, is within reason. The parts here where they're hooked to the brake shoes, the, the links, they're fine too, the pins are fine. We're going to leave those together. But if we come around here to the other side, over here, this uh, brake cam is very loose and as you can see, has a lot of wobble up and down and more so this direction with the arm sticking forward. Uh, so, I looked up in the catalog, also sent a message to Langs, those bushings that are in there, if there are bushings, I would assume so, are not available. So, this side, I'm afraid we're going to have to do something with it. To me, this tipping could easily contribute to breaking the shoes. It, it might take a long time, but we've come this far. We want to have everything kind of decent. The other thing we did, we took the rear cap off the rear pinion and uh, discovered there was no key in the nut, which it, it seems to be tight, but that needs to be keyed. I wanted to take a look in there and see if there was an accumulation of icky grease and stuff like that, but it was clean. We also the uh, front pinion bearing and washer actually just slid right out on its own. So, and it, and it looks fine. When everything there is together, like it is right now, everything spins nice and smooth. Next thing we did was we did drain the oil. Uh, it has definitely been changed in its lifetime. Oil came out, no water, no metal, um, just nice black stinky oil so that was a real positive note uh, at some point in time it's been it's been uh, changed and there's obviously it's been a part and somebody's done a few things to this so 
Then the question is, well, do we take it out of the truck and split it? One, to get a look-see inside, and two, as you can see, it has been leaking between the two halves. So we have a new gasket for there. So we're this far away. The only thing that's really stopping us from taking it apart is to undo the shackles, which you can see are already loose from when the truck came in. Drop the rear end out, stand it on its end, and just take one half off. We'll take the half off that we need to work on the brake arm, the brake cam. Um, that way we can just put that half up on the bench and get it up here where we need to, to, to see what's going on. So I think that's what we're going to do next, is we're going to move the jack stands, get them up farther onto the frame rails, and then uh, we will drop this rear end out, get it stood up, take out all those bolts. All those bolts have cotter pins in them too. So if they don't come out, you just spin the nut off and, and deal with it afterwards. But very time consuming. So anyway, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I wanted to, the, the spring shackles too, you can tell there's quite a bit of wear there. I talked to Langs, uh, those aren't available anymore either. So it's kind of been, you know, we've switched gears. You know, the, the engine stuff we did and essentially the front end stuff is all the same as regular Model T. But back here is where, you know, the frame is different and the rear end and the rear springs and, and all that stuff is much heavier. Um, that's where we kind of notice the stuff that isn't available anymore. The other thing that surprised me was like uh, the unavailability of um, the top. You can buy the material kit, but no one makes the wood kit for the closed cab anymore. Yeah, it's not too awful hard to make with a bandsaw, but uh, sure be nice just to have some uh, plug and play stuff. But that's what happens, you know, these aren't as popular as a regular T and there isn't the demand for a lot of this stuff. So eventually they just disappear. So let's, uh, I guess, not be mad about it, but be thankful for what we've got. So, and we can make bushings, you know, we've got a lathe. We're, we're fortunate to have a, a small lathe and we can get some material and put them in. And honestly, if they're not too awful bad on the spring shackles, we're just gonna put them together because this thing isn't gonna go to work again. Um, it's just gonna be driven around. Uh, so it's, and back here, that isn't as much of a safety issue as it is in the front if the, uh, the shackles are worn where it can cause steering issues. So anyway, we'll, we'll figure that out when we get that apart. But I just wanted to give you an update to, to where we are. Uh, I wanted to look at these last few things and get ordered what we needed. We do have some of the parts for the rear end, so there's stuff we can do, but I want to get the, all the small stuff ordered and get it coming while we're doing that. So trying to stay one, one step ahead as much as we can. So, all right, when we come back, you'll probably see the rear end out. All right, stay tuned. Okay, we're back. And as you see, we have uh, done some more work off from camera here. We have removed the radius rods and the brake rods, just uh, two bolts, each uh, radius rod and two pins for the brake rods. We have them laid down here. And since the shackle bolts were already loose, um, they came right out. So we dropped the rear end completely out. After looking at it a little closer, it was leaking on the center gasket between the two case halves. And let's be honest here, it's a lot of work to get down to just that one gasket. But uh, we were already there. I mean, the bearings were out, the seals were out, the dry shaft was out, the rear cap was off, all it was, and the oil was drained. All that was left was to drop the rear end out, stand it up, take the bolts out from between both halves, and uh, see what we got. So we'll be able to replace that gasket Plus, uh, we'll be able to just look, take a look-see inside to be sure that the clean oil wasn't hiding something. So, anyway, uh, I have done that. I've taken it apart. Ever want to see what's in a TT rear differential? You're about to find out. So let's go over here where we have it standing up. Here we 
as you can see with the height of the cab here I've got it on a little metal stand propped up balanced with a board it's a little sketchy but I'm the only one that's here so no one else is gonna bump it or anything like that it's pretty stable now something I'm gonna tell you this rear end is super super heavy okay so here's the other housing that is one chunk of metal okay and the way I had this stood up I didn't really think about it but I had to lift that straight up off over that axle shaft we got it done but uh, it was a little tricky uh, when I go to put things back together I'll probably use my cherry picker or engine hoist so anyway let's uh, let's take a little look see here and see what's inside remember these are completely different than the car as they are a worm drive as you can see right here is the thrust bearing there's a steel plate with a groove in it uh, a set of ball bearings with a plate holding them together and a matching plate with another set of grooves in it this right here is the bearing sleeve for the pinion it's still in the housing here the lock bolt is on this side they will just lift out this end here is the dry shaft end got another sleeve with a bearing in it and then we have the ring gear and carrier with the spider gears down inside uh, if you have ever heard about high-speed rear end gears this is not a set of them as you can see there are four flutes on the pinion that is the seven and a quarter gear ratio today when my son was out here we played around with finding gear ratio by marking the ring gear marking the pinion and I had him turn to see how many times it would go around because uh, he's learning uh, about uh, ratios and uh, mechanical advantage and things like that so it, it everything in here looks really good in fact as you can see I'm turning this with just two fingers and it's very very smooth there's a little bit of backlash but worm gears have more backlash than regular drives great part about these rear ends is there is zero adjustment sure you can do some shimming on the preload of the pinion here um, but that's it these are your side carrier bearings those just slip into place so essentially as long as everything feels good isn't too loose or too tight we'll be cleaning this up putting a new gasket and a little bit of sealer in between bolting it back together and taking care of a few of the other problems but I, I, I just love mechanical things like this um, if any of you ever used to play in the parts stores with a little countertop display for Lucas oil additive the little gears that you uh, turn with a crank this is kind of that same satisfying thing if you turn it in reverse it can walk the pinion out of here and it fall out so just gotta be careful but I thought I didn't know if anybody had ever seen the inside of one of these more than just pictures of the gears and how they work uh, like I say this one turns miraculously smooth so so anyway there's that uh, also over here on the chassis the bushings in the springs here are just about worn clear through I think we're going to take the time to find some that are close and machine them down a little bit they're the same way as the ones in the housing so this is the housing that has the worn uh, brake cam and then it has the bushings in there and they are worn pretty good too we're not going to make it like super tight we're just going to take up some of that slop we just don't want them to wear through and get into the cast so I mean if you greased them up good they'd probably be okay the way they are we've come this far like I said these this rear end will probably never be torn apart again so we might as well do what we can while we're here so 
So anyway, on that note, we'll, uh, we've got a bunch of cleaning to do and a bunch of measuring to see if we can find the bushings. And then when we do, we'll uh, be back with the camera and show how that is done. But I just thought this was kind of a, a neat hands-on demonstration. I know my son really enjoyed it. And uh, in the end, he's like, oh, man, we were actually learning, weren't we? It's like, that's right. So, so anyway, um, I'll probably put this much into a video uh, with the other stuff we've shot. And then uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.